Well, this Sunday would have been Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall's 115th birthday, and WJZ will join the community to honor his legacy and celebrate his life on that day. And to celebrate his life and honor his legacy, we're taking a look back in history and revisiting the Upton neighborhood, once recognized as the core of Baltimore's civil rights movement. There's a story in West Baltimore right here in the Upton neighborhood. These blocks rich in history, with deep roots in the abolitionist movement and civil rights activism. To many, it's long faded from view. Just as Thurgood Marshall called Baltimore way up south. But not from the memory of those who live to witness it, like retired Senator Michael Mitchell. He remembers the neighborhood's glory days when Druid Hill Avenue rose to prominence, shaping its identity as the heart of Baltimore's civil rights movement. I have a dream. You see Dr. Martin Luther King walking by. Imagine uh, Medgar Evers, who was assassinated in June 13, 1963, by the Ku Klux Klan in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, you, you saw uh, Wilma Rudolph, who won the 1960 Olympics. Uh, even Muhammad Ali came to my mother's office when, while well, he was appealing his case to the Supreme Court. In an office space on this street, Thurgood Marshall prepared his fight in Brown vs. Board of Education. Union Baptist Church is where people gather to hear Mary McLeod Bethune speak. This neighborhood, part of the district represented by the late U.S. Representative Elijah Cummings. Mitchell says time has taken the people who remember it best, like his grandparents who lived right here on the 1200 block of Druid Hill Avenue. This is hallowed ground. This was the home of Kiefer Albert Jackson and Dr. Lily Mae Carroll Jackson, longtime president of the Baltimore branch of the NAACP. The civil rights era central to the community's reputation. Vivid memories. While I'm sitting here, I must tell you that these are white marble steps. And all along these blocks, we as young people, including Dr. Hathaway, had to scrub these white steps and uh, before people went to church. Not far from this stoop and just a block over is the once segregated elementary school where Supreme Court Justice Thurgood Marshall learned to read and write and where many of Baltimore's history-making sons and daughters attended in its heyday. I went to in the 1950s. I graduated in 1957. But out of that comes incredible people. The historic elementary school now in the process of a transformation. Sounds of construction evoking feelings of pride. This was a school of excellence. Now just think about it. If there's any message that we need to communicate today is that our schools can be places of excellence. So here we're going to have a school that's going to be transformed into an amenity center that's going to have such rich uh, offerings. Dr. Alvin Hathaway spearheading the project as workers restore the once crumbling and decaying structure. I think that's how you begin to transform communities when you do things that are meaningful to people. They don't just parachute in. No, it comes from their sense of being and emerges out. Uh, so this was a $14 million investment. A uh, $14 million investment in this community. On this corner, another symbol of progress for Mitchell, whose own family is entangled in West Baltimore's history. This building to be named after his mother. The Juanita Jackson Mitchell Center will be an uh, incredible help to this neighborhood for young women who have been abused, they, who need employment, who need drug counseling, who simply want to get a scholarship and pursue their education, who need help raising their families. These blocks remain a place where he can still see the the footprints of activists from his grandmother's steps, where it all began. What do you think about these steps now? Uh, these Pretty steps, they, they need a little work, but other than <laughs> that. And WJZ is the proud media sponsor of the Thurgood Marshall Celebration happening this Sunday at the BMA. We will be streaming the performances all afternoon long on CBS News Baltimore. I was just saying I love how it was shot. I love how you told it. What a story. I am just so moved by the people in that community 100%.